going on, guys? JD from New York here. What was it again that I say? Shit, I forgot. Fuck. Oh, that's right. Is number 94 part number one of the number one source right here on youtube.com for everything everything WWE this is off the script the number one fucking podcast in your subscription box right here on youtube.com thank you guys so much for joining me off the script, gonna be a big weekend, I got news on Mick Foley, fucking desperate to talk to Vince McMahon about the current WWE ratings, apparently the WWE was in the New York Post today about their slumping ratings, and you know if the New York Post is reporting about your ratings, you are floating up shit's creek, we'll talk about that on Saturday, but today... I got a lot to talk about in the form of Kevin Owens and where he was on Monday Night Raw and why he was absent from an otherwise dreadful show. So uh, you're lucky that you didn't see Kevin Owens because who would want him to be a part of such a fucking piece of shit show? God forbid that he was fucking put in there instead of Del Rio with the League of Nations. God only knows what would happen if he was on that show. But I'll tell you where Kevin Owens was and why he missed Monday Night Raw. And I'll tell you what is going on with this big rumor about Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar going one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania 32 and why I think it would be a huge mistake on WWE's part and why that match should not happen at WrestleMania. But before we get into that, I have a few things I gotta do. We're gonna do a Wrestle Crate unboxing real fast. Right before we get into the news and rumors, I finally got it sitting right here, right next to me. But I want to say thank you to everybody that has come out in support of my Monday Night Raw review. I, I feel like there's a revolution going on, man, with the Monday Night Raw reviews. They, they are incredibly popular, and they're gaining a lot of traction. In my wildest dreams, I wish WWE would take notice of a fucking fan, a lifelong fan. For over 25 years in me and sit me down and tell me you know or, or ask me what what is wrong with the show what would you do differently I, I in a fucking dream world I wish that would happen I wish they would do that and ask me and come to me you know but my Monday Night Raw review man did close to like 900 likes I mean obviously I'm not the only one out there that feels this way about the product you know so obviously we're starting a trend and I'm going to continue doing the Monday Night Raw reviews for you guys because one of these days it's got to change. One of these days it's got to get better. But I want to thank all of you for supporting and subscribing and following my Twitter and my YouTube and staying connected with me. It means a lot to me. And this has been a great week as far as growth goes, man. And that Monday Night Raw review video, you know, it's got a lot to do with it. So thank you to everybody that has come over and joined Team JD, okay? Number two, I got... More content going up on the Danger Zone community channel, man. This is going to be an absolutely epic gameplay commentary. WW2K16, it's half podcast and half gameplay commentary. I go over the reasons why WWE should do Sting versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 32 instead of the one match that everybody wants to see, and that is The Undertaker versus Sting. At WrestleMania 32. So that's coming soon. Look forward to that. If it's already been uploaded by the fine people over at the Danger Zone Community Channel. I will certainly link you down in the comments and in the description. So you guys can get all that plus so much more from the Danger Zone. Number three. Thank you to everybody that has gone out and purchased a off the script t-shirt for the Black Friday sale. It greatly means... A lot to me. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting the show in that way through Pro Wrestling Tees. If you guys want to get your Off The Script t-shirt, they are available in all sizes. They do ship internationally. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WWE Off The Script. And I'm working with one of their artists 
to get new designs done, man. I got a few things. Just letting you guys know. Get off my TV. The hashtag. I'm trying to get that on a shirt. And I got an idea brewing up here. So hopefully uh, one of the artists over there, David, who works with Pro Wrestling Tees, can bring my vision to life. And I can get you guys some more uh, variety as far as the t-shirt store over there for off the script. All right. And as always, if you guys are not following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. If you guys are not sub uh, subscribed to the channel, I don't know what the fuck you're waiting for, man. This is definitely the number one place to be for all WWE right here on YouTube.com. And the fine people over at WrestleCrate, WrestleCrate.com, and on Twitter at WrestleCrates, leading into the unboxing. We're going to be unboxing this bad boy right now, man. Right before we get into the news. Here we go, man, and I like what I see. Let me make myself a little bit more comfortable here. I like what I see already, man. I like what I see already. You guys can see the Funko collection right there and all my action figures. Andre the Giant Funko. Look at him. Oh, yeah. That's going right up there in my collection, bro. That's going to be fucking beast. I like it, man. We got Sting, and now we got Andre. And in this Series 21... There's the Ultimate Warrior, Roddy Piper, and the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, man. Those are the other ones right there you can see on the back in this Series 21. But we got Andre the Giant Funko Pop in this month's WrestleCrate, man. Fucking beast. Ed, did you get me a large t-shirt this month, bro? Let me see. Let me see, man. What does this say? The sky is the limit? The boss. Bank on it. Is it a large? I can't tell. I can't tell if it's a large. It's a large. It's a large, bro. Awesome. Bank on it, man. I don't know if that's Sasha Banks. The sky is the limit? The boss. Since 1990. I don't know what the fuck that is, man. Someone tell me what this is, man. I don't know what the fuck it is. Obviously, it's not Sasha Banks, the boss since 1992. I don't know. Maybe it is, man. I don't fucking know. But there you go. T-shirt in this month's Pro Wrestling uh, Wrestle Crate. I was going to say Pro Wrestling Tees. Probably from Pro Wrestling Tees. What is this, man? We got a vinyl figure. Vinyl figure here, man. Look at this. Mystery Minis. Mystery Minis right there, man. Who is in it? Joe apparently got John Cena. Oh, we'll see who we got. Maybe we'll get John Cena too, bro. I don't know. See what we got going on here. A bag inside a box. Oh, shit. We got the ultimate warrior. Look at him. Nicely done, bro. No John Cena, but we got the ultimate warrior. He's going right up there with uh, my Macho Man Funko. Sitting up on top of my desk. What do we got here, man? Ooh, a championship belt. I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't know what it is, though. What the fuck does it do? It's a fucking championship belt here. Look at it. I don't know, man. Here's what it is. I like championship gold. This is pretty cool, man. I love coffee. I love fucking coffee. And we got a tumbler here, man. Power bomb. We got a fucking mug. This is awesome. I'll be drinking some fucking cold beverages out of this, man. Look at that. Beautiful. Russell Crate is getting better and better each and every fucking month, man. Seriously. And finally, to close out this Russell Crate, we got the Hardcore Lucha. The Hardcore Lucha comic book. Look at that. I don't read, but it's fucking awesome. And then we got... What do we got here, man? Uh-oh, look at this. Is this from the Calling Spots people? Let's see. What do we got? Ooh, look at this. Michelle's favorite, Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. Matt Hardy signed autograph picture. And I'm sure she was thrilled about that. And look at this, man. Calling Spots exclusive limited edition for WrestleCrate of the Rattlesnake. Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. That's your WrestleCrate for November 2015. That is fucking beast. That's probably one of the best crates that they've ever done. And they're getting better and better, man. If you guys want... To go subscribe, WrestleCrate.com, 
and then on Twitter at WrestleCrates, and use the code JD sent me for an instant 10% off everything you guys order for your first purchase. Man, that's JD sent me WrestleCrate. Dot com. That's the ultimate crate and the standard crate. 10% off, man. You can't beat that. Edward Allen, thanks a, lot. thanks a lot, bro. I greatly appreciate you guys supporting the show. And these guys, man, they're fucking stepping up their game each and every month. You can't ask for that. You can't ask for anything better, man. So thank you to those guys. And go check those guys out, man. Great fucking folks and a great product that I definitely stand behind. All right? Now, let's get on with the news here for Off The Script. Just yesterday, there was a report that Kevin Owens recently did an interview with the Like Father, Like Son podcast and revealed that his top opponent choice for WrestleMania 32 would be Brock Lesnar. To reiterate the following, this is what Owens said on the podcast. I quote, I've answered this question a couple of times and my answer is always Brock Lesnar because I just love to be in the ring with him and see what it's like. There's nobody quite like Brock Lesnar as far as pure strength and viciousness and everything else. I'd love to see if I could hang with him and see how much I could hurt him. Naturally, the opinion of the current Intercontinental Champion has gotten around the dirt sheets enough for WWE officials to discuss the idea of Lesnar versus Owens. Now, it's being reported by WrestlingNewsSource.com that the match is definitely a possibility. Former WWE writer Court Bauer revealed on the latest edition of MLW Radio that WWE officials have indeed discussed Lesnar versus Owens for next April in Dallas. The match is not confirmed and likely won't be for a while. But the fact that WWE is open to the idea that this dream match um, and that this dream match is coming up and they're open to the idea, this is very exciting for WWE and its fans. The physical style of both men would be explosive and not only elevate Owens, but give him the opportunity to become a made man in WWE for years to come. Now, you guys want to know why Kevin Owens was not on Monday Night Raw to add to this news article about Owens versus Lesnar at WrestleMania. The current Intercontinental Champion Kevin Owens was notably absent from Monday Night Raw this week. It was revealed this week that the reason Owens wasn't on Raw was due to his health. It isn't more severe than the common cold, but it was bad enough for WWE to send Owens home. Kevin Owens is mortal after all. It turns out that not even Mr. Wrestling can get away from the flu every once in a while. While Rest Owens Rest does its job, Dean Ambrose prepares for WWE's TLC pay-per-view later this month in Boston, Massachusetts. Honestly, the build hasn't been good enough between Ambrose and Owens to warrant a title change, but that doesn't mean that the feud should stop at one. Most likely, both men will be an entrant in the 2016 Royal Rumble next month. However, one of them is expected to be the IC champion at the event. Unfortunately for Owens, he's not likely to win the Royal Rumble match, but he's doing an excellent job as the Intercontinental Champion, and that should roll into the biggest show of the year, which I'll talk about in a second. Arguably, Owens has had the best calendar year of any WWE performer over the last year, he should have a prime spot at WrestleMania. Who knows? Maybe we'll see the Lesnar versus Owens match in Dallas at WrestleMania 32. Now, that's the reason why Kevin Owens was not on Monday Night Raw. Good. He didn't miss anything anyway, man. Really. It, it really didn't matter. I mean, he could miss the rest of the fucking weeks on Monday Night Raw leading up to TLC. And the match that he's going to have with Dean Ambrose at the pay-per-view is probably going to steal the show anyway if it's in a TLC match. So, it really doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't matter. I hate the fact that WWE throws these guys out there with no storyline behind them, man. I watch the WWE product not only for the athleticism of what happens in the ring, but I want to see two guys go at it for good reason. I want to see two guys battle it out with storyline behind it. I don't want two guys to be in the ring and have it mean nothing. You know, and this is what exactly WWE has been doing for the second half of 2016. They've done it with Ambrose numerous times. They've done it with Bray Wyatt. They've done it with Roman Reigns. They've done it with uh, Kevin Owens with the whole Ryback situation. It doesn't make any sense, man. I want a meaningful storyline behind it. There's no reason why these two are fighting. There's no reason. And if WWE went with my idea about Dean Ambrose 
becoming the face of the WWE and having him overcome all the odds against a heel Roman Reigns, maybe we, we would be in a different position. You know, the Goldust idea about going after Kevin Owens in the IC Championship actually makes more sense because they have a back and forth going on Twitter and that could have easily, that could have easily transpired and bled into Monday Night Raw and what happens on USA Network and on TV. I just don't see why WWE did not go with this idea. And it's all slowly, slowly but surely, blowing up in their face, okay? Now, as far as the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 32 goes, I know there's going to be some people out there who don't know what they're talking about, who just want to jump to conclusions about Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar. Oh, it has to happen. Oh, make it happen, you know, blah, 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 for whatever fucking stupid reason that these people come up with. No, it should not happen, you fucking fool. It should not happen. The idea that I laid out for you, I don't give a fuck what WWE has planned. I don't give a shit what Dirt Sheet is saying what. I don't care what podcast is spewing bullshit. All I know is I've been saying this for months. Months before anybody else has been talking about it. Only the most logical human beings know what's going on in WWE. Sami Zayn has been out. Okay? He's on the verge of making a comeback. He's going back down to NXT. Okay? He's going back down to NXT to get his feet wet before he makes his main roster debut. WWE needs to bring Sami Zayn to the main roster. I don't mind that he's going back down to NXT. I know Sami Zayn is not going to make a huge splash down in NXT because you got Apollo Crews, you got Baron Corbin, you got Samoa Joe, and you got Finn Balor. It's going to be a very, very tight-knit group at the top of the card for NXT. Sami Zayn is not going to work his way back into the main event picture down at NXT. He's merely going down there to get his feet wet, to get himself reestablished in front of a live audience. And then before you know it, Hopefully, WWE brings him to the main roster. Let me see if I have this right. Do I have this right? I just want to make sure my fucking mic settings are correct, okay? Anyway, Sami Zayn making his main roster debut for WWE would be the absolute best thing for not only him, but for the company, okay? The Royal Rumble is an event that back in the day had a lot to do with feuds being built going towards WrestleMania. Kevin Owens has had a great year. We, we know this. He's, he beat John Cena in his first pay-per-view match. You know, he's had a great feud with John Cena. He got himself established. He got his feet wet on the main roster. He won the Intercontinental Championship from Ryback. He really hasn't had that great of a run, but the title by default uh, draped over Kevin Owens' shoulder looks great. And it, I don't give a fuck who Ryback was wrestling or how great Ryback was was doing in the ring, which he wasn't. I'm just using that that idea. You know, I don't give a fuck how great Ryback could have been. Uh, the, the belt being draped over Kevin Owens' shoulder means more than whatever Ryback did with it or whatever Ryback could do with it because Ryback is awful. Kevin Owens is going to be a great intercontinental champion. What needs to happen is Kevin Owens needs to be in the Royal Rumble. He will be in the Royal Rumble barring sickness or injury. Kevin Owens needs to come out and he needs to be dominating. He needs to be dominating. I don't give a fuck who you put in there. Put him in there with people that he could eliminate, that he could dominate. The Usos, put him in there with the Lucha Dragons. You know, have him pull a Stone Cold Steve Austin where he's in the ring and he's by himself. Have him be in there and pull a Diesel. One guy comes out and he's waiting. Kevin Owens, fight Owens, fight. Especially in fucking Florida, man. People would be going crazy for this. Have him be in the ring for a good five-minute stretch. One guy coming down, one after another, and he eliminates everybody. And then Kevin Owens, the cocky fucking bastard that he is, waiting around for the next guy to come out. And all of a sudden, you hear Sami Zayn's theme. You hear Sami Zayn's theme, and Kevin Owens got his back turned, and then boom, that fucking music goes off. And he can't believe his fucking eyes, man. Sami Zayn makes his main roster debut. He makes his pay-per-view debut. And he gets retribution for Kevin Owens putting him on the DL. 
And these two go at it. The crowd is going crazy. And these two battle it out until the next slew of guys come into the ring. And before all is said and done, Sami Zayn is the one to eliminate Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn ruins Kevin Owens' shot at going to WrestleMania and fighting for the WWE Championship. Sami Zayn comes back and just gets a little piece of, a little piece of retribution on Kevin Owens. This is simple. This, what is it, this is what needs to be done. You're taking a page out of the 1992 Royal Rumble. You're taking, out, you're taking a page out of the Royal Rumble where Diesel stood tall, where Stone Cold was in the ring by himself. You know? This is simple booking. Simple but effective booking. Remember in 92 when Ric Flair was in there by himself trying to catch a breath, and all of a sudden... The fucking buzzer goes off and Roddy Piper, a fresh Roddy Piper comes down and he starts beating the shit out of Ric Flair. That's exactly what you got to do to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Exactly that. Don't turn your back on the booking that you gave us back in the day. Take bits and pieces of that and use that as motivation to book your current product right now. Because whatever you got going on, whoever you got booking your fucking product is shitting up the fucking place and... It's failing. It is failing. And like I said, and I like I say each and every week, I mean, who scripts this garbage, man? Who scripts this garbage? This is brilliant. You didn't listen to me with Roman Reigns. Are you going to listen to me with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn? I doubt it. I doubt it. But I'm telling you what needs to happen. And if I don't see that very instance where Sami Zayn comes down the ring and fucks over Kevin Owens in the Royal Rumble... Which builds to their match at WrestleMania. I throw my hands up in the air. And I quit. I'm giving you brilliance. I'm giving you solid creative ideas. For free. I would serve coffee to everyone at Titan Tower. For free. Let me sit in on a creative meeting. Let me sit down and jot down some ideas for you to use. For free. I live 20 minutes away from Stanford, Connecticut. Let me in and have some fun with this, man. I'm tired of watching my WWE suffer. I'm tired of watching my WWE be reported on in the New York Post for failing ratings with a fucking blown up picture of Vince McMahon. Is Vince McMahon out of touch? They can't put on good storytelling anymore. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to read it. Something needs to change. 2016, things need to change. You're already fucked up the Survivor Series. You're already fucking up Monday Night Raw to the point where it's going to be unrepairable. I mean, come on now. You gotta start fresh with the Royal Rumble. If you don't do what needs to be done in the Royal Rumble and make this special, I don't know. I don't know. WrestleMania 32 belongs to Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. Brock Lesnar versus Kevin Owens does not need to happen. Yet. I didn't say it should happen. It should not happen. It should not happen this year. There's no need for it to happen right now. If you don't do the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens thing right now and strike while the iron is hot on these two that he's back, everything is going to be wasted. Everything is going to be wasted. The longer you wait and the longer you are lazy and the longer you are lingering with these fucking possible feuds, they're not going to mean anything. They're not going to mean as much compared to as if you do them now. They need to happen. And this one needs to happen. Work on it. It needs to happen right now. Not next year. Not at SummerSlam. Not at Survivor Series. Not at next year's Royal Rumble 2017. It doesn't need to happen. It needs to happen now. Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar. That can happen at WrestleMania 33. If it takes place in Minneapolis. We don't, we don't fucking know yet. You know, that could happen then. But for Christ's sakes, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn is one of the simplest ideas to give you a five-star match at WrestleMania. That match would embody what everything is about WrestleMania. Everything. And for the Intercontinental Championship, when would we have ever seen an Intercontinental Championship like that? A match like that take place for that title? I can't remember when. I can't remember when. If you want one match that's going to define what the Intercontinental title is going to be, 
It could be Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Imagine them, both of them healthy at WrestleMania 32, putting on a fucking IC title match. Come on, bro. You want WrestleMania 32 to be the best card that you could possibly put on? That's the first match I'd start with. It needs to happen, and it needs to happen this year. If you wait, nobody's going to fucking care. Moving on, Monday Night Raw. Tommy Dreamer made his triumphant return to the WWE. It was a surprise to be sure, but the WWE Universe has embraced the heart and soul of ECW with open arms. Backstage news on Dreamer's current run with WWE is that he is not signed yet. Some of you have been telling me that he signed, but according to my sources, he is not signed to a long-term deal and simply had some free time since TNA's tour of India was postponed. WWE Television, he joined ECW brother and the Dudley Boys in their feud with the Wyatt family. However, there are four Wyatts to Bubba Ray, Devon, and Tommy Dreamer. It's still a three-on-four situation. Is WWE planning to bring back one more big name from ECW to even the odds with the Wyatts? The rumors are circulating right now that WWE will reveal a fourth member during next week's edition of Monday Night Raw to even both families at four men and a team and culminate in a tables match at TLC. What the fuck is falling? I got shit fucking falling from my desk over here. What the fuck, man? I got fucking Macho Man falling off my desk. What the fuck? Jesus Christ, man. Anything can happen right here on Off The Script. So they're looking at a four-on-four tables match at TLC. There's no doubt that many heard the Dudleys announce their family and immediately thought of Spike Dudley. That would be a nice surprise, but now that Tommy Dreamer has opened the ECW door wide open, the possibilities of many former ECW talents to make an appearance on Raw and TLC are vast. For example, Rhino is currently signed that performs in NXT. It would be very easy to bring him up for a cup of coffee to be the fourth member. Another strong option is the former ECW and WWE World Champion Rob Van Dam. Needless to say, if WWE wants to bring in one more member for Team ECW, they're going to bring a lot of intrigue and nostalgia to a matchup that wouldn't look as much fun on paper. So I like this idea, man. This could be something This could be something nice for TLC, man, just for that nostalgia kick. You know, this was a rumored match well before SummerSlam, before the Dudleys even signed on with WWE. Uh, there was back and forth about the Dudleys and the Wyatts, and the Wyatts at one point were using the Dudley drop, the, the the 3D drop, and that was supposed to happen at SummerSlam if the WWE brought in the Dudleys for SummerSlam. They obviously debuted after SummerSlam, and now they're picking up where those rumors were circulating back during the summer, and they're doing this match now. Um, I like it. Uh, I like the fact that it could be hardcore. Um, no disqualification, tables match, I think it's going to be a brawl, it's going to be um, a nostalgia kick on the old school ECW theme, and I like this, you know, the Wyatts can get down and dirty, we all know the Dudleys and Tommy Dreamer could get down and dirty being hardcore, who would I want to see in this role, I don't want to see RVD man, I, 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 don't, I, I don't really want to see RVD in, in this role, I would much rather see a Spike Dudley, I, I think he would be the catalyst, and he would generate the most excitement here, um, and it would make the most sense if it's Spike Dudley, man. I, 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 don't, I just don't see Rob Van Dam as that exciting anymore. Rhino, I mean, that could work as well. But I think Spike Dudley mixing it up with Bubba Ray and Devon and Tommy Dreamer, I think that would be the nice kick that this feud needs for that nostalgia run. It's a one and done, and then after that, you know, both teams can move on to something else. But I think that would be a very, very intriguing and interesting and fun match at TLC if it did happen. Lastly, guys, WWE has actively been pursuing and scouting major talents from all over wrestling promotions around the world. It's only natural that WWE would gain significant interest in some wrestlers from New Japan Pro Wrestling. However, there has been a great deal reported about WWE pursuing AJ Styles for a run in NXT or even in WWE. The Phenomenal One's contract is expiring with New Japan in January. But we'll have to wait and see how that story develops. Styles isn't the only superstar in WWE or that WWE is interested in and bringing in January. WWE is now reportedly interested in signing current IWGP Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. The King of Strong Style is also going to be a free agent when his deal expires in January. The rumors circulating is WWE would be interested in bringing him to NXT around the same time that Hideo Itami makes his return to the company. The possibilities are endless if, if Nakamura, with his experience, comes into NXT. 
His ties to Japan would make him an obvious opponent for Itami, Balor, or anyone else in NXT or WWE that wants to get in the ring with one of the best wrestlers in the world today. Nakamura would be a massive signing by WWE and could open the door for many more New Japan Pro Wrestling stars to make the crossover, including AJ Styles. Let me tell you something. If WWE goes out and gets who they want, their report's going around all week and about AJ Styles, who I heard is injured and is resting. He's in pretty rough shape right now. He's got a, a pay-per-view to do in January for Ring of Honor. But he's banged up right now. But if WWE can sign AJ Styles, there's also rumors about Jay Lethal coming into WWE. And Nakamura. And, and we mentioned this on Out of Nowhere, Joe and I, Joe Croner and I. If you guys missed uh, episode number seven, link is going to be down below in the description. Great show. WWE and Triple H especially, the people down in charge of NXT, if they go out and get Jay Lethal and AJ Styles and whoever else, man, I, I doubt they bring in Nakamura. I, I mean, if they do, it would be fucking unbelievable. I'm not familiar with his work because I don't watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. But if they do, obviously the name recognition alone is going to garner them fucking tabloids and fucking news articles all over the world, man. It's going to be WWE under the fucking spotlight, and that's what they want. They want the, the notoriety. But if WWE and Triple H and NXT brings in these these guys, I mean, is there any reason to watch Monday Night Raw? There's no reason to watch Monday Night Raw, man. I feel like if Triple H brings in all these guys, it's him sticking it to Vince. You know, look at my roster. Look at what I've assembled in, in NXT. And look at you fucking shit up on Monday Night Raw. It's like a fucking power struggle here, man. If that's the case... Move Monday Night Raw to Wednesdays and put that at one hour and give us NXT for two hours on, on, on Mondays. Can you imagine that? I mean, this would be phenomenal. I know, I know WWE wants to take NXT on the road. I know WWE wants to make NXT a touring brand and they want to generate some, some money with NXT because right now they're not, a re they're not really a money-making brand. I just hope that they're not overexposing the talent. They're not stressing the talent enough to the point where they're going to be uh, injuries after injuries after injuries. But... I mean, if WWE goes out and gets either Jay Lethal or AJ Styles, man, it doesn't necessarily have to be Nakamura. If they get all three, I mean, is there any reason to watch Monday Night Raw, man? WWE Raw would be the second best show on WWE television. I mean, NXT would be far and away the number one place for WWE fans to go watch wrestling. And they know it. Vince knows it. Triple H knows it. I mean, I can't imagine what... What backstage politics this is going to have if Triple H brings in these guys, man. It's only time is going to tell, but AJ Styles, Jay Lethal, and Nakamura to NXT. Going to have to wait till 2060, man, but it's going to be very interesting to see WWE actively pursue these guys and what happens when NXT in 2060, man. It's going to be very interesting. I mean, NXT is fucking on fire still right now. I can't imagine if they bring in these guys, man. Holy shit. Is it going to be off the fucking chain? Can't wait to see what happens with NXT in 2016. If I hear anything regarding these three guys and signing with NXT, I will definitely let you guys know right here on Off The Script. Thank you so much for watching part one. Thank you for watching the WrestleCrate unboxing right here for November 2015. If you guys enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. And everything you guys need about what I got going on is in the description of this video, man. Make sure you guys go check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you want more great WWE news and rumors right here on Off The Script. I'll be back with part two, talking about Mick Foley and Vince McMahon and Mick Foley's frustration with WWE Creative. That's all coming up on part two. Until then, guys, this is JD. Thank you so much for watching this Friday, and I'll see you right back here for Saturday, Off The Script. Talk to you all later.